Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, okay, making sure you're still there. Thank you so much, Claire, for that introduction. It's always nice to come to an event like this and meet a distant relative, so that's always a nice surprise. <laughs> I'm very honored to be here with you today and even more excited to welcome you to Sesame Street's Digital Neighborhood. As Carly and Carla mentioned, it's been nearly 40 years since Sesame Workshop, formerly known as Children's Television Workshop, was founded. And it was founded on this idea of taking education, combining it with fun, to create meaningful children's programming. And nearly a decade after CTW was founded, the interactive media group was born. At Sesame Workshop, we employ an interdisciplinary model that balances content, production, and research we come together with a great team of producers, writers, researchers to create prototypes. After creating prototypes, of course, we conduct research with children because indeed they are the experts. We want to assess usability, assess the appeal, and also assess the execution of our educational goals. And then we use that research to inform the development of a final product designed to help all children reach their highest potential. We apply this same interdisciplinary model when creating the new SesameStreet.org. And our challenge, much in the way that Sesame Street, the show, harnessed the power of television, was to harness the power of the web to continue to help children learn in exciting and innovative ways. We took this approach of media convergence, taking these formally distinct methods of communication and putting them together to essentially create a Sesame Street channel. We wanted our website to be a destination where kids could not only find games, but also find videos, print materials, podcasts. Many people know of Sesame Street as a fantastic show, and we are all incredibly proud of that. And we also wanted to reinforce that Sesame Street is also so much more. With more and more preschoolers online, we wanted the world to know that we indeed stand firm in our commitment to reach children and meet them where they are. Our design involved implementing new features, two of which I'll talk about today, including playlists and interactive video games. And our research involved approximately 100 children in the preschool age group, which indeed was our target audience. So you might be wondering, what is a Sesame Street playlist? Well, as you can see here, this is a prototype that we tested. It's a lineup of seven videos and games all about the same theme. And we have three different themes. They could be curriculum-based. You can have a playlist all about the letter C or completely devoted to the number five. They're content-based, so you could have a playlist all about animals or seasons. And we also have character-based playlists. So for those of you who have your favorite Sesame Street characters, you can find a playlist all about characters like Elmo and Oscar and Big Bird and Rosita. We also have two versions of these playlists. You can access a featured playlist via our Sesame Street homepage. One thing we know from research is that children learn when they have a trusted guide. And our Sesame Street characters serve as that trusted guide. So when you come to sesamestreet.org, they greet you on the homepage, welcome you to the site, and introduce you to the featured playlist. We also have archived playlists. And you'll see the example of the buttons at the top, our navigation menu. When you click on that purple Sesame Playlist button, from there you can access hundreds of archived playlists. So again, it all begins with the research. Some of the primary questions we wanted to address were how kids are going to interact with this Sesame Playlist. For example, do they ha want to have a programmed experience where they play in order one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Or do they prefer a more child-directed experience, going from one to seven, back to three, up to five? And also assessing whether or not this preference vary, varied across age groups. And as many of you know, when you're looking at, to develop anything interactive and anything online, you want to also look at the interface. And so another thing that we wanted to understand via our testing was how kids were responding. Are the icons large enough? And also look at the spacing to, to determine whether or not they're far enough apart. We employed the following methodology. We tested children one-on-one, -on -one, and we had them play two rounds of the playlist. The first round, we encouraged them to experience it as a purely linear programmed experience. And the second round, they were given the opportunity to play as they wanted. So again, they can pick and choose which asset they would play first, second, third, fourth, and so on. And what we discovered is that children did not express any frustration while interacting with the playlist as a linear experience. However, it's important to note that even though they didn't express it, they might have felt it, they just didn't express it. 
But most children, when given the option, chose to interact with the playlist in a nonlinear fashion. And for those of you who are familiar with preschoolers, it probably comes as no surprise that they really want to be in the driver's seat, determining what they want to play and when they want to play it. And this was pretty consistent across age groups. Also, in terms of the interface, the size of the icons and the spacing between them did not present a problem for our users. Now, in addition to looking at those questions, we also had the opportunity to see how children were responding to the interface, um, excuse me, to the content um, as it relates to the interface in this playlist build. And we found that kids really liked humor, no surprise. There was one interesting clip with Cookie Monster where he's looking for things that begin with the letter D. And of course, being Cookie Monster, when he finds the daisies, he eats them. Now, kids cracked up. They love this particular segment. And our takeaway from that was that, when possible, incorporate videos that include humor, things that kids would find funny. We also found that kids tended to lose interest when there was lots of dialogue but very little action. So our takeaway, again, was to show more than tell. Also, slower ballad-like songs did not necessarily sustain their attention as well. And so we decided to select videos that would keep them moving, um, get them very excited, and that had an upbeat tempo. And we found when compared to games, um, the videos weren't necessarily as popular as the games on the computer. But we think that's because when kids come to the computer, they do so with the expectation to do something. And so our recommendation from that was to create featured playlists with two or more games whenever possible, and also to avoid video-only featured playlists. And I also want to note that at Sesame Workshop, we have a phenomenal domestic research team led by Dr. Rosemary Trulio. And we were fortunate enough to be able to work with members of her team to create the most engaging playlist possible for our audience. Audience. And our final product, we have a strong mix of videos and games that kids can play in order or skip around. And if there's something they really like, they can replay it as often as they want. I keep saying kids, but we found that these um, playlists are pretty popular with adults, too. <laughs> and you'll see the example here, um, a Cookie Monster playlist. We have two games here, and we also have color coding that you'll notice. The blue denotes games, and the orange denotes a video. So if you were on our site and you were looking to play this Cookie Monster playlist, you would experience the following. Now what starts with the letter C? Cookie starts with C. Let's think of other things that starts with C. Uh, ah, who cares about you can feel other free to things? Sing along. C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. C is for Cookie. That's good enough for me. Oh, Cookie, Cookie, Cookie starts with C. Oh. <laughs> That was great. So it sounds like some of you might be replaying that first asset quite a lot, which is good news for us. <laughs> In addition to testing the playlist, we also created interactive video games. Now, these were very new for us, but as I mentioned, we have nearly 40 years of content. And so one of the challenges and questions that were posed um, in our meetings was, you know, how can we repurpose the, this content to have kids engage with it in new and exciting ways? And alas, interactive video games were born. An interactive video game is a mix of an existing Sesame Street segment with interactivity. So the example you see here is a prototype. It's the first interactive video game prototype that we created. And the way it works is that kids using this paintbrush as a cursor color in the picture of Cookie Monster. And when they've completed the picture, the still image of Cookie Monster launches into an actual video from the Sesame Street show. This game was extremely popular with kids. Um, we worked with them. Initially, we provided some instruction to help them understand how to engage with the game. But clearly, they understood the paintbrush was the cursor, and they enjoyed the video payoff. I have this quote here from one three-year-old boy who was um, so engaged with it. When he finished the game and saw the video payoff, he said, I did it. I want to do it again. And so we let him. And he finished it, and then he said, I did it. I want to do it again. And so we let him play again. And he said, I did it. I want. We said, OK, whoa, whoa, we have to give someone else a turn here. <laughs> but if that's any indication of how popular these games were, um, they had such high appeal. And we, of course, as researchers, were extremely pleased to see that kids were able to engage with this content in a whole new way. Now, that's not to say that the interactive video games were without challenges. 
One challenge was, as I mentioned, we had the researcher who was working with the kid deliver the audio instruction. And so we realized that in creating this actual game for the website, we would have to provide Muppet host instruction from the very beginning. In addition to the Muppet host instruction, we also added inactivity prompts. So if the child is inactive for any period of time, we would have a prompt play to help guide them through the experience. Also, children had some confusion when they didn't see any result after mousing over that yellow panel. So in the same way they were trying to mouse over the Cookie Monster picture, they tried to mouse over the yellow panel and you'll see that it had said, oh, I can't paint the paper. So again, what we learned is that we had to either decrease or eliminate the size of that panel. Also, coloring in the gray keyboard and mouse posed a problem to kids. You'll see there's a very strong contrast with that green background and the gray, and also Cookie Monster turning blue. But because the keyboard and the mouse are naturally gray, kids thought that maybe something wasn't working quite right when they moused over those particular pieces of the image. And kids had some difficulty filling in all of the picture. And so to address that issue, we decided to use an autofill function. After all, they're preschoolers, and we wanted to be forgiving um, to not just to require them to fill in every single pixel on the picture. Here you have an example of the before followed by the after. This is an example of the interactive video game that currently appears on our site. And you'll notice that we have a very strong blue border indicating the area um, that the child is supposed to color in. You'll also notice there's a lot less gray. We've replaced the gray with black and white line art. And we've also replaced the cursor. Instead of a paintbrush, we now have a crayon. And this activity is now called Color with Murray, who's one of our newest Muppets on Sesame Street. So based on the success of this interactive video game, we decided to create more interactive video games, including keyboard-based games, sequencing games, math games, and you will be able to find these games in addition to hundreds of other games, thousands of videos, and playlists, all for free on sesamestreet.org. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to pause and ask if there are any questions. Uh, uh, oh, uh, 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 excuse me. Oh, uh, uh, Senora. Uh, oh, Senora Makita. Oh, I have a question. Rosita, hi. Uh, what are you doing here? Hi. Well, uh, um, let me get my little. Um, well, I, I came here to play in the sandbox, but um, I I, I haven't found it yet. Do you know where it is? Rosita, I think you have the wrong idea. You see, this is the Sandbox Summit. There isn't an actual sandbox for you to play in. Aye, Mama. What you talking about, Makita? <laughs> There's no sandbox? Oh, now what am I going to do with my sandbox toys? Oh. I'm going to put them down there. I am so embarrassed and sad. <laughs> it's okay, Rosita. Uh. Oh, you see all of these people here? <laughs> We're all here to discuss new playing fields of technology and how huh? technology is changing the way kids play, learn, and connect. Really? Really. Uh, all of you are doing that? <laughs> how is it going? <laughs> because you know what? Uh, playing and learning are some of my, 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 my favorite things. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh, you know, Rosita, we've actually been learning about SesameStreet.org, and <clears throat> if you like, I can talk to you about some of the other new features. I love new features! Are you kidding me? Can you teach me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What you, you want to look? <laughs> oh, over there. Oh. Well, the, the, first new the first new feature I'm going to show you, Rosita, yes. is called PlaySafe, and it's something your parents are sure to love. Did you say PlaySafe? Uh, does that mean we get a special set of, uh, sheen guards? Um, no. 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 You know, PlaySafe is a way for parents to simplify and secure their child's online experience. Ah, so you put sheen guards on the computer. Wait a minute. Do computers even have sheens? Hmm? No, computers don't have shins, Rosita. Are, do you know any computers that have shins? Hello? I don't think so, right? I was just kidding. Yeah. Well, mm. Everyone here likes jokes. That's cool. I think the <laughs> joke didn't go very well. <laughs> but we try. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Well, you know, Rosita, there's um, something I'm going to show you, but it's not coming up right now. So you want to tell me how uh, Elmo's doing? 
Oh, Elmo is doing fantastic. Yeah, he's doing wonderful. You know, I had problems with Cookie Monster this morning. He ate all my breakfast. Oh, I'm a little really? hungry. Wow. But anyway, so how is it doing? Yeah, is it working now? No, not yet. Something is going on here, but um... I think the shin guards are on. I think it might have a shin guard on it, Rosita. Isn't okay, that take something? Take your time, no problem. I'll just talk here with my new friend. So how are you doing? I'll just stop responding. I, you well, know what? I think I was petting my dog this morning and I got a little flat. <laughs> Do you think you can help me? Well, you know, Rosita, yeah. mm -hmm. I can just talk to you about the features and maybe everyone here can go on sesamestreet.org and check them out later. Well, no, I don't think so. I want to see the features. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I knew right, you were going right. to say that, Rosita. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's all right. Can, yeah, yeah. You, can, you can talk all about you want about the features. I'm here. I'm listening. And uh, yeah, I have a little call, as you can hear, but um, yeah. <laughs> So tell me about all so, the features. So you have this great feature called PlaySafe, right? Yeah. And when you're playing a game or playlist, the PlaySafe button is located at the top right corner of the page. I like the type right corner. I think it's a great location to me. <laughs> so clicking on it reloads the page in PlaySafe mode so kids can freely interact with all of the games and videos on the site, mm -hmm. but they cannot navigate away from the SesameStreet.org experience. Really? Really. That sounds like a wonderful thing. You know what? Do you think... Oh, but your computer is not working, but I want to yeah. IM my mommy and tell her all about the play safe thingy. Well, I'm not surprised, Rosita. You're pretty sophisticated. Well, but... can I use your computer? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? I want to check. Well, you know, you know what? You know what? I, I would have... If I was in play safe, I would have to hit Alt PS to exit. But it's very easy for kids, you know, to have their moms and dads do for them. You know, I always try to, to, to do the, 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 the art PS, and I put my toes and my ear, and, and, and it's not fair because it's not an easy thing for a kid to do. I know, but you know what, Rosita? That's huh? the point. Huh? Yeah. What but, is the point? But, not being able to do it? Well, it's good for parents to do, but you know um. what? That brings me to a, another innovative feature that we have that's really easy for kids. Yes. Large kid-friendly buttons and a special star cursor. <gasps> we have a star cursor? We have a star cursor. I had cursor. no idea. That is amazing. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, 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 what is the star cursor? Well, you know what, Rosita? I'm actually going to show you the star cursor in just a bit. Do you like stars? I love shinies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you look at them at nighttime? I you know, look at it at nighttime. I yeah. make a lot of wishes that never happen, but it's okay. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, I love, I love, I love sparklies. Yeah, you know what's really great about stars, too? You can look at them and make shapes with your finger, like squares. So and you mean the star cursor, you push it and it sparkles? Our star cursor makes our site very kid friendly. <gasps> That's wonderful, but that's yeah. good for me, right? Do you like, Very do you like good sparkles, for you. people? Yeah, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. You know, in our research, we've observed so many kids, and what we found is that it can be really difficult for them to position the tiny tip of a cursor on something to select it. That is my problem every day. <laughs> Guilty of that one. Yeah, you didn't. they're preschoolers, so they're still developing their motor skills. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait a minute. I didn't even realize that kids were able to drive. <laughs> Can well, I drive? Not quite the way you're thinking, but oh. to oh. keep the frustration out and the fun in, we've oh. designed a very special star cursor, and any part of it can be positioned on a button to select it. Oh, that is so wonderful, Senora Makita. You're so awesome. Yeah, and did you check out our sparkles? Is it working now? Yes. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> Look at me, I'm, I'm sparkly. That's right. I look so pretty. <laughs> yeah, you can clap and say, oh, she looks so pretty. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, look at that, I have sparkles, I sparkle yes. issues, I love it. Well, the other thing we noticed from our research, Rosita, is that Kids need very clear visual indicators about what's a clickable area and what's not. And so whenever you're paused with your cursor on a clickable area, mm -hmm. it sparkles. 
Oh, I love that. Oh, you are so wonderful. Thank you so much. Gracias, Senora Makita, for teaching me, even if it didn't work very well at the beginning, all about sesamestreet.org. I can't wait to show Abby and Elmo and Cookie Monster and everybody else on Sesame Street about that we have a star courser. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Rosita. And people, ladies and gentlemen, what you have all been waiting for all morning and me too, lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Adios.